Cool. So we have 10 available numbers to us. Anybody know how, num how many numbers we've got available to us with binary? Two. 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 What are they, guys? Zero and one. Zero and one. Does anybody know how a computer can use those numbers to actually form useful information? Why does it only have the ability to use zero and one? What do they refer to? Switches. Switches. Carry on. Uh, the zeros indicate uh, an off switch position and the one indicates a non position. Perfect answer. A zero indicates an off position and a one indicates an on position. This is exactly what binary actually means. This is the whole logic behind it. The reason was very clear when computers occupied huge rooms. Now, don't get me wrong, this is still the case today, but it was clearer when these machines were in huge rooms because you could actually see these individual switches in action. They used to be contained in these massive glass tubes called vacuum tubes and inside there, there were these electrical contacts. And these electrical contacts were in one of two positions. They were either on, i.e. electricity was flowing through the contact, or they were off. 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 One, zero. One, zero. Can you have something a little bit on? No. 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 A little bit off? No. Let's not think dimmer switches here. I think we'll just get confused. Yeah? A switch is either on or off. This is exactly why we have to learn binary. Because fundamentally, computers can only understand two things, whether it's on or whether it's off. Now, of course, what the computer has is hundreds of these, nay, thousands, tens of thousands. And as computers got more and more powerful, we're now in the millions of individual switches that are used in combinations to create useful information. How many possible states do I have with this? There's one there, and there's another state there. So how many possible states do I have? Two. Two. Not much use to me at this point, is it? So what a computer has to do is it has to use binary digits in collaboration with other binary digits to actually form some useful information. Let me show you what I mean. Best way for me to, to teach you binary is, first of all, to go back to primary school and teach you something that you already know about. It's called decimal. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to give you a decimal number. Well, one of you guys give me an example of a three-digit decimal number, please. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. So we've got one, two, three. Okay. So if I said to you, I'm going to give you one, two, three pounds, is that how I would say it? No. What would I say? 123. Okay, 123. So how did you know it was 100? Why wouldn't it, why wasn't it 321? It's because they're three digits. Three digits, sorry. Three digits. Okay, but this if I said 321, there's still three digits. But which way am I reading it? Left to right. Left to right. I No, no, which way was I reading it? Right to left. Right to left. Is that the right way or the wrong way? The wrong, wrong way. way. Which way do we read it? Left to, left, right. to right. left to right. So we read the one first, then the two, and then the three. So Chris is perfectly right. When he said to me a second ago, 123, he just used his knowledge of decimal numbering, which he's been using all his life, to work out what that number meant. Which would you rather? That I gave you 123 pounds or 321 pounds? 321. Yeah. Because instantly he knows, hang on, 321. That's worth more than 123. How does he know this stuff? Don't worry, you all know it. Don't panic. There's nothing strange about this. But the fundamental is that he worked out the value of these numbers based on the column that they were in. You with me? Let me show you what I mean. Chris may not have actively done this, but this is effectively what he did in his head. He broke this number into three sections. And he said, OK, then, this column we've got here is worth how many units, guys? Three. Three, three of what unit, though? One. Of ones. One. So it's worth three ones. What's this column worth? Ten. Two tens. tens. Cool. Two tens. What's this column worth? One hundred. Hundreds. Hundreds. So what he effectively did in his head is he went, OK, then, 
So what David is going to give me is he's going to give me 1 times 100, 2 times... Oops. 10. Thank you. <laughs> 2 times 10s and 3 times 1s. What does that lot add up to, guys? 123. 123. It's not very complex math at this point, is it? We've got 100, which gives us 100. We've got two tens, which gives us 20. We've got three ones, which gives us three. Add them all together, you have 123. Now, of course, we don't have to do this mathematics for this type of calculation. But what I want to do is I want to emphasize to you the process that we went through to get this number. The process that Chris, um, that Chris went through to work out that it was 123. Because it's exactly the same how we do it in binary. Exactly the same. There are only two differences. So it's not quite the same. <laughs> it's pretty much the same. There's only two differences. First difference is, take a look at our diagram that we've got here. If this were a decimal number, could I use the number 3? Sorry, if this were a binary number, could I use the number 3? No. no. Could I use the number 2? No. No, because the only two numbers I'm allowed to use are... Zero and, zero, and one. 0 and 1, because they are the only two states that a number can exist in. Remember those switches going on and off, on and off, on and off? The only two states are 0 and 1. So let me give you an example of a binary number. Here's a classic example of a binary number. 1, 0, 1. Now then. The first thing that's changed is that I could only put zeros or ones in this number. They're the only numbers that are available to me, remember. It's a base 2 numbering system. I can only have 1 or 0. That's it. Next thing that's changed, the value of the columns. Andy, you said you had a little bit of experience with binary. What's the first column worth? The first column on the right-hand side, that is. A one. That's worth a one. What's the next column worth? Two. Two. The next column worth? Four. Excellent. Andy's binary knowledge is sound, then. <laughs> what happens to the number as it goes from right to left? It doubles. It doubles. So what do you think the next one would be, Khalil? Eight. Excellent. The next one is going to be an eight. So let's think about what this actually means. Everything from this point on is exactly the same as what we did with decimal. Exactly the same. I simply say 1 times 1. In other words, I want 1 of the column 1. Gives me? 1. 1. one. I then say that I want 0 of the column 2. So I want 0 twos. So 0 times 2 gives me 0. zero. zero. The next one I want to do is I want 1 times 4. So 1 times 4 gives me 4. 4. four. Add them all together. 5. 5. The binary number 101 one has the decimal equivalent of the number 5.